Okay, good evening. Uh, so today we will see uh, the next part in uh, authentication with the Flask. Uh, <coughs> so today the session will be very short. Uh, so generally, <coughs> whenever we actually whenever we register, so our uh, username and password will be stored in a database. So for example, as of now we are storing it in a plain text format. So if some user using some uh, attacks like SQL uh, injection uh, attack somehow uh, any hacker got uh, access to this database uh, so then it is easy for them to just uh, take uh, <coughs> take a, a username and password and uh, they can be used for anything if it is a banking website they can actually uh, get all the money whatever uh, we have in the uh, banks in that so to avoid uh, one layer of security so uh, we will be encrypting our passwords and it's like a hashing uh, technique actually we will be uh, using both encryption and hashing and uh, going forward we will be adding some salting uh, to the uh, passwords also. so generally what exactly encryption is uh, we already did uh, some uh, kind of project on this uh, Caesar cipher uh, project if you have remember we have already did so uh, when uh, depending on the number of characters it should move for example uh, if it is a uh, two characters so instead of uh, a we uh, the encryption key is uh, it will be C so it's like the encryption key is uh, two or two places so uh, something like uh, the same thing it's like a scrambles data into an unreadable format so others we should have a secret key to enco uh, decode that until unless we have a key we can't uh, identify what exactly the encryption is so and uh, this is a two-way process for example with the right you can decrypt the cipher text and retrieve the original data so once we have the data whatever that uh, inside that so it's generally uh, it was used in world war 2 like uh, enigma mission you can say uh, so if i just go ahead, there are actually the machine something looks like uh, this one in world war 2 so depending on uh, both sides should have the same mission and uh, both sides should have the same setup so this has used in World War II, but uh, there is a uh, some uh, drawback uh, in the World War II. If you just uh, uh, check this video, so we have already provided the link. So it will be uh, what exactly happened in uh, World War II, why the uh, Enigma mission code uh, can be cracked. So this is one part, and actually there is a crypti.com. So for example, if uh, this is the text you want to send so if we have selected enigma machine so it will actually decode uh, like encode it so if i just uh, again go back and if i just i'm copying it i'm removing everything just i'm copying the same thing and i'm pasting here and i am decode I just okay. So something happened. I just. The reflector is the same thing, the model is same. Okay. Okay. 
continuous I think there is some sort of an intruder but uh, we have this uh, uh, encoding uh, different different uh, types of uh, encoding like Morse code we already uh, know how like for uh, before there used to be secret Morse codes we, we used to send So modern cryptography then cipher thing the different different encodings uh, techniques uh, this is actually uh, you can just uh, get hold of this and then just check uh, how the text is uh, behaving on different different uh, things like you see yeah this is actually going uh, encoding here if I just copy paste this and I just want to check where is this? it got decoded correctly here but uh, there is some enigma machine I think we need to do some setup uh, before using uh, enigma machine cipher so again cipher cipher is something we already uh, know how to shift if it is a uh, sample just hi so uh, let me encode this hi how are you so just I'm um, now I'm going to decode because we know how much shift it is like 7 So this is how we have that. So coming back uh, here, uh, the same thing like when transmitting sensitive information online, like credit card encryption uh, products uh, protects you. Uh, so for example, uh, our account number uh, will be masked uh, when or we open the account until unless we uh, purposefully uh, on that different different encryption techniques was uh, applied so the same thing uh, it's like uh, it uh, stored on different uh, devices encryption so now what comes to ha uh, hashing is like uh, so it's like uh, fingerprint you can say uh, it's like a fingerprint of the data so every thing like every word will have some hash codes so depending on different different hashing techniques uh, it will be uh, available so now uh, hashing is a one-way process so it's like uh, if we have hash generally we can't uh, go to original data and it will result in complete different hash value. So general the reversibility in hashing we can't uh, uh, do that uh, the main original data it's like we can uh, only uh, what we can do it just uh, it has a hashing uh, dictionary type of uh, mappings that only uh, it can do so it's like uh, for every uh, change in the data there are the hash case will be again it will be changed so but in encryption if there is a change in data so uh, the original data the key remains the same uh, it can be uh, decrypted even the original data if we, there is a change we can actually uh, check the original data whatever it got changed so generally now here if you see <coughs> websites uh, don't uh, store the actual password so this is uh, what we will be seeing today how it will be done uh, so whenever we enter our password it actually uh, 
<coughs> convert it and it actually compare with the uh, already stored hash key then only it will be so it's like as of now we haven't uh, we all that uh, stored in this kind of uh, plain text right so it should not be stored like in generally uh, no one will store uh, our passwords in text like so again this is like integrate this is another use case so you can see so uh, here is an analogy again uh, if you look uh, document in the safe using a, a decryption key so only if uh, someone has uh, that uh, key to unlock then only they can read that so if the document uh, tampered so they uh, someone has uh, changed the document the, the fingerprint won't match so it's like uh, it's uh, considered as a forgery Generally, encryption is reversible, but hashing is uh, again not reversible. It's just confidentiality. So here, it ensures integrity. So there should not be any change. So that's why, like uh, when hashing uh, hashing ensures, it is uh, the original data won't be changed. That's what. Uh, so someone has uh, if. Uh, if the same key and someone has uh, changed our password and but in the database if it stored the same hash key uh, then we don't have the access but uh, if only the uh, hacker who has changed our password will have the access so uh, to to eliminate that kind of uh, issues so generally hashing is the preferred method So here a hashing doesn't use us any keys. So actually it just uh, matches whatever the hash key it is uh, generated before it is it matching with uh, whatever the user has entered the uh, password and converts it into uh, that and it adds. So just uh, we have given all these links and now uh, the other thing is like uh, generally uh, users will tend uh, to keep default passwords but what happens when we keep default passwords is like so in we have Wikipedia so this is like uh, top most converted uh, like common passwords 1 2 3 4 5 6 1 2 3 4 5 7 so this can be easily cracked actually there is a uh, oh, MD5 calc uh, there's a hash calculator so generally uh, this can uh, bruce fruit attacks so uh, if any hacker can uh, do that like uh, they can have uh, dictionary kind of stuff so for uh, quality uh, so for example so if you just, uh, just have, I have searched for quality hash code what if users uh, already have a default uh, 10,000 list of something like uh, this so uh, when our uh, hacker want to just uh, they got uh, hold of this uh, hash key and if even they search for uh, this one in the Google so uh, directly they can get the decoded hash value whatever the password they have even even they have encrypted even they uh, the database stored only this hash key value uh, then also it's not uh, safe and even if the multiple users having uh, the same password then also it's like uh, we are having the same hash key for the all the four four to five entries for example if I just go back here I have one two three four five six seven eight and again one two three four five six seven eight one two three four six, uh, five six seven for first two then the hash case will be the same so again uh, it can uh, do when if a user got uh, uh, like 
uh, access to the, our database then he can actually do the Bruce for attack uh, and uh, he can uh, easily uh, do the like uh, mappings like uh, there is a uh, some md5 hashings uh, there's some website where they have all the data already available for a different different so they can actually they have nearly 20 billion uh, combinations uh, in uh, they can run in 0 0.9 seconds uh, all that combinations even this is uh, so sometimes we get different different uh, emails also so this is something like uh, that one so when our user want a yeah so if, if uh, any hacker uh, try to get our username password so they can send uh, something like this of uh, uh, email and uh, they can actually get our uh, uh, password or information also so if we are not careful like this is just this is uh, just uh, a demo even if we are, our passwords are uh, pond is like uh, whether our passwords is already hacked or not just we can uh, I'm just typing one two three four five six seven eight if I just yeah. so this will this is the one website where we can check whether our passwords is compromised or not. Just I am using. So I have uh, given another password. So with all the upper characters and uh, all the necessary things. So. So this is uh, one way uh, user should be also careful but there are different techniques also uh, employed at a backend uh, by the uh, developers so if I just uh, go back so even I even the same hashing techniques they ca uh, there can be high chances of uh, data leak so uh, to prevent that again there is uh, another uh, layer sec a layer of security is called salting so we can add uh, extra layer of security so whenever a uh, user want uh, uh, to register with uh, two different accounts and uh, but the password will be same or different different users but they are using the same password so salting is a technique where it provides different uh, even for the same uh, password uh, the salt it got added will be different so it is like a random of uh, characters so before hashing we can unique hash value so even the same uh, password for different different users but uh, whenever they are storing uh, in database a, all the password will be unique all the characters whatever the, uh, we have given it will be unique so why salting is important so it prevents actually rainbow table attacks so as I am discussing the same thing already pre-computed tables will be there nearly uh, they will have millions of uh, pre-computed tables and it's there are uh, GPUs where it can perform 20 billion uh, stretches, 20 billion uh, mappings in uh, just uh, 10 seconds. Not 10 seconds, it's like 0 0.9 seconds. 
so very powerful GPS but when now we are uh, giving uh, salting so it actually uh, makes a very less uh, ineffective because for the same thing uh, same password there are different different uh, combinations mm -hmm. it never knows uh, how what is the combination it is using so it will take a months months to crack that password So this is uh, the main uh, scenario is the product uh, identical hashes. So now uh, at the moment we are actually Uh, storing our database so now we will be deleting all the data so just uh, deleting just deleting all the data and now so now we need to uh, secure our uh, password before our saving so this is Vrakjug is the uh, Python library so we generally we installed it already in the requirements.txt we will be having that so we with the help of this Brexit so we are generating we will be generating the hash hash and salted password so whatever the password we give it will actually convert into a hash and uh, it will add salt depending on uh, this thing so whatever length we have so generally using uh, this methodology we need to Yes, and uh, we should we have to give 18. So now, if I just go here, for example, so now generate password hash. So here it will be the password and then it will be uh, the method so as of now the method uh, we need to change by default it is the method and solution by default it is like 16 so it's the default parameter so this uh, is the less secure you can say uh, okay we will be using this one So this is uh, the thing like uh, what is that security generate a password hash. So what exactly we will be change when our user will be restring we need to store this hashed password. So let's uh, go here and see what we did. So now request out method the same thing. Uh, so here what we are doing we are uh, generating one uh, variable hash and salted password and we are using generate password hash so what it is it is imported from regzug security from regzug dot security we are importing generate password hash and then uh, we are getting whatever the user enters from the form password and the we are giving the method and the salt length we are keeping it to 8 no nothing a difference just uh, we are we are adding only this line one line just uh, it is in open multiple lines and everything is same so instead of getting directly from request uh, dot form dot uh, get password we are getting it from hash sharted password and now 
if I just see and everything remains the same like uh, secrets.html and the template commit so nothing uh, nothing is there nothing got changed so this is the main thing we need we we are uh, looking at so now if I just go here we have this So now I am again uh, because I deleted everything. So at red gmail dot com and I am using by default password one two three four five six seven eight. So now sign me up. Okay. let me just close this So if you see a uh, download file now just I will be opening uh, that again users so if you see here so the password I have given is one two three four but uh, before it is to be a different uh, plain text but now we have added uh, encryption like uh, hashing and salting now if I just again uh, go back just so I run I am just giving this and I'm just using the same password one two three four five six seven eight so just check whether it will give so now uh, record got created so again but here uh, this is a default uh, I meant to say this uh, method uh, so if we go back here so 6000 is the method so just we have given this also the default it will take uh, 6000 the method but if you see here it is actually uh, changing all that uh, it is adding different different uh, salting uh, techniques so if you see this one so this is uh, the salt it got added 1 2 3 4 5 6 Seven, eight. So here it will be the different salt. Oh. And actually there is uh, Rexig. Uh, it it again uh, has uh, some other mechanism like uh, even the hash keys. It it will be uh, deferred. So to enhance security uh, in the Rexig, so it add uh, both salting and uh, even the hash key. It will be deferred even if you are giving the same password so uh, different different uh, libraries it will have different different but uh, generally in flask uh, we use rexec uh, for storing uh, this kind of uh, passwords in uh, this mechanism So, yeah. Yeah, for today, uh, this is it. Tomorrow we will see uh, the login. As of now, we haven't uh, seen how how login works and how. 
uh, how the remaining uh, things like uh, we haven't done the login thing and how how to render uh, or redirect to secrets root and the logout also we haven't worked as of now so tomorrow we will work on all these three and how to check whether a uh, user is logged in or not so it's uh, again the flask uh, thing we will be uh, seeing that all the decorators are going forward in the flask how uh, how how to check if user is logged in then only we will be redirecting him to the secrets page otherwise we won't be redirecting him we will be saying unauthorized that's it for today uh, thank you